This one is fairly recent and a little strange, so let's dig right in. I'll also leave a link in the description if you'd like to read the full translation of the thread. On May 7th, 2019, a user posted on Gochan, the successor to Nichan, that his three-year-old son had spoken to him of his previous life. This user was apparently brand new to the forums and had little idea how to use them, apologizing for any mistakes he might make before diving right in. According to this man, the night before, May 6th, his wife was making dinner downstairs while he was using the computer upstairs. When his wife called him down for dinner, they both realized they didn't know where their son was. After a quick search, they found him in the bathtub, muttering something. Upon getting closer, it sounded like he was saying Namu Amida Butsu over and over, a common Buddhist chant that roughly equates to giving thanks to Buddha. Worried, they carried the boy into the living room, asking him where he'd learnt such a chant, but the boy said nothing. A few minutes later, he finally fell silent, and again, the boy's parents asked him if he was okay. This time, he responded, although it shocked both parents. He asked if someone, a name they'd never heard before, had gone yet. The father then said he got angry at the boy because he was scared, but his wife kept her cool and asked the boy once more if he was okay. Yes, he said, and when the wife asked him his name, the three-year-old said, Shusaku. This was not his name at all, and the last name he gave wasn't their last name either. The boy's actual name was Dio. So, what on earth was going on? It's not uncommon for young children to play around and create their own little worlds, but as the mother continued to question the boy, both parents started to suspect that the boy wasn't playing at all. He appeared to actually be possessed. At this point, it's important to note that the father titled the thread, My son spoke to me of his previous life, yet nowhere in his post does he bring this up again. It seems like a fairly standard possession story. Another Gochan user brought this up and the father even admitted that he had no proof that this Shusaku person was actually his son's former life, but that it just felt right to say that. In any case, the mother continued to question Shusaku about how old he was, where he was from, why he was possessing their son and so forth, and they discovered that he was actually from a city not too far from where they lived, and as they dug further, they were able to get his parents' names, his birth year, 1960, and the fact that he could only remember up until his early 30s. He remembered the schools he went to, that he was a single child, that he lived with his parents and grandmother until junior high school. After that, he went to high school in the city and it was around that same time that his grandmother passed away. He couldn't remember anything from the second year of high school up until the age of 28, but he felt like he was in his 30s. The parents recorded all of this on phone and the interview went on for roughly 40 minutes. Despite many requests to share the video, the father refused, saying that it would give away who they were and he wasn't comfortable giving up their privacy. He did, however, ask for advice. The father reportedly had already searched for Shusaku on the internet, but he was unable to pull up any information. He kept the last name the boy gave a secret as well, just in case. The only solid information he gave was that they were all from Iwate Prefecture in Japan's northeast, as some other users had guessed from the particular dialect he used. At this point, if you're anything like me, you're probably already thinking how highly suspicious all this sounds. Both Nichan and its successor Gochan are notorious for trolls, and this wasn't shared on the occult forums, but somewhere else, as a regular post. Without proof, what is there to believe? The man said he had it all on video, and yet he refused to share it. If he wanted people to believe him, it would be easy enough to blur the boy's face and only share a short clip online, yet he refused. The boy eventually returned to normal after the mother asked Shusaku a rather tough question. Do heaven and hell exist? 
Shusaku answered with a confused, Eh? And then disappeared. The boy fell to the ground and that was the end of their conversation, according to the father. The mother took him to the hospital the next day, just in case, but the doctor didn't see a need to give the boy a scan and, after examining him, sent them both home. There appeared to be nothing wrong with him. Yet, the parents couldn't get Shusaku out of their mind, and they were unsure how to proceed. What would they do if he returned? Why had he possessed their son in the first place? Did he have unfinished business, and if so, how could they help him move on? Some users wondered if it was a kitsune that had possessed the boy. Others claimed it might have been Yamanoke. They threw all sorts of wild suggestions out there, and the father spent the next day answering various questions that people had, although getting nowhere himself with what he should do. In the end, he decided that he would visit the place Shusaku told them that he was from, and see if they could find his parents. If Shusaku was born in 1960, as he claimed, then his parents could potentially still be alive. If so, that would confirm everything Shusaku had told them through their son. On May 11th, four days after his first post, the father returned with a final update. He visited the place Shusaku told them about with his wife, mother, and son. They had apparently found Shusaku's family home. It was all true. According to the father, they stopped by a small shop and asked an old woman inside about the surname Shusaku had given them. Turned out this family lived just a short drive away, and so they went straight over. The woman who answered the door gave her name as the same one Shusaku had given for his mother. They showed her the video they'd taken of their son, Shusaku speaking through him, and she invited them all inside. To cut a long story short, it appeared that Shusaku was indeed a real person, and the information he had given when speaking through the couple's son had all been true, right down to the details of his family life during his childhood. Shusaku's mother revealed that he died when he was 31, of a heart attack. Meaning, he would have died in 1991, 28 years before he possessed Ryo. It was sudden and happened while he was at work. He left behind a pregnant girlfriend, who gave birth to his daughter after his passing. Users suspected that Shusaku had unfinished business, perhaps with his parents or the child he never got to meet, and it remained unclear whether Shusaku was actually a spirit possessing Ryo or if Ryo was actually Shusaku reborn. He only surfaced that one time, when they found the boy chanting in the bathtub, and he never appeared again after that. Was it really possible that the boy had remembered parts of his former life? Or was Shusaku simply a wandering spirit that had attached himself to the boy? Or was it all just one random poster taking Gochan for a ride? The story seemed to end well, with the family visiting Shusaku's family temple with his parents and urging him to move on while the chief priest there performed a purification for the boy. Shusaku's parents even exchanged phone numbers with them, and hoped to keep in contact in the future so they could meet Ryo sometime again. After the initial incident, Shusaku never returned, but the information he had given the husband and wife had sent them on a not-so-wild goose chase across the prefecture, ending up meeting the apparently real parents of a man nearly 30 years dead. Again, despite claiming to have video of all this, the man outright refused to share any. So even setting aside whether you believe in ghosts or reincarnation, it's a little hard to take his story at face value, especially taking into consideration the nature of Ni-chan and Go-chan. Many users greatly enjoyed following the story and seeing the updates in real time, and some even suggested that Shusaku may not have been Ryo's previous life or even a wandering ghost, but perhaps his guardian spirit. Nobody was ever able to find a suitable explanation for the boy's chanting, but considering Shusaku was a fairly devout Buddhist, it may have had something to do with that. This story remains a mystery. The father never posted any updates after his trip, 
presumably because the chief priest had helped Shusaku move on. No proof was ever shown, despite claiming he had some, and whether you want to believe this story is, ultimately, up to you. Was the boy really possessed? Did he remember a former life? Or was it all one elaborate internet story that took readers along for the ride? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.